Hello everyone, this is the experimental setup for lab number nine, rotational kinematics. Even though I'm not sure why it's actually called rotational kinematics since nothing moves in this lab, but let's worry about that for another time. So here we just have this stand that we're going to put the ruler on here and that we're gonna to try to balance. So more appropriately, this is more of a statics lab. Uh, and then here we have our mass hangers with our clips. So we're gonna put these clips onto the ruler and then hang the masses from there. And then make sure we measure all of our masses, which I have, as you can see, pre-done. Uh, so basically the point of this lab is that we wanna put our ruler on here, such that when we hang masses on here, it doesn't move in one direction or another. All right, so that thing stays static. And we'll talk about why it's doing what it's doing at the moment. So using that, then we want to fill out this beautiful chart, uh, which is given in the lab manual. So here we just have to identify what all of these different question marks are for these different six systems. Uh, I'm only going to go through two of them, uh, and then I will give you all of the results for you to then synthesize and then answer any post-lab questions for. So good. So first thing to note is that even though the rod is a uniform shape, the center of mass should be directly at its center, but that's assuming that this thing has uniform mass density to it. So if it doesn't have uniform mass density, when I put the clip on here, and I go ahead and throw this guy on here, if it automatically goes to one direction, what that means then is that one side is heavier than the other side. So the first thing we should probably do then is determine exactly where the center of mass of this thing is because we're gonna need that for the calculations because when we do torque, we need to take the distance from the pivot points, which in this case would be the center of mass, but obviously if it's not directly at the center of mass, that kind of screws things up. And also when we do other systems where we don't rotate or have the pivot point directly at the center of mass, and it's off to the side, well, the mass of the ruler is going to cause a torque as well, which means that we do need to know exactly where the point in that center of mass is. Now, in this case, it's actually not too bad. It's not going all the way down to the table. So in a lot of cases, when you put this on, it would be all the way down to the side, do something like this. Uh, in that case, definitely one side is heavier than the other. Uh, this one could be because it's slightly off, but again, it's not all the way touching down. Um, and it also could be that, you know, a lot of these clips and everything are a little bit bent and kind of messed up, but and that's fine. I'll take that as the center of mass. So looking at this, I'm going to push that over just a little bit. Again, let's see if we can adjust this thing just slightly to the location of the actual center of mass gonna move this thing by about a millimeter and see if that does any better mm -hmm. so about the same go a little bit further Okay, that's much better. So that puts that the center of mass of this ruler is at about 50.1 centimeters. So good. So basically from here, we're going to look at here. Now I'm only gonna look at systems one and four. So with system one, as we can read off the charts, what we have here is that the pivot point is at the center of mass. Uh, we're going to hang then 50 grams at a position of 20 centimeters. Now that is position, not distance from center of mass, which means that when I'm looking at the ruler, it's going to be right here at 20 centimeters. It's at a physical position. Uh, and then I'm going to hang 100 grams at a position unknown to then cause this thing to, again, look something like this. So there is zero torque basically on our system. Now, since I'm putting mass over here, that's gonna pull the system in this direction, which means that I have to put a mass on this side to cause it then to balance out. And since I'm hanging about double the mass, that means I'm not gonna be at about 80. Right? I have to be somewhere closer to the pivot points in the center of mass. Otherwise, if I'm too far away, that's gonna cause a much greater torque. 
So we should expect that this thing is going to be somewhere closer to here, somewhere between the 60 and 70 range probably, to counterbalance that point. So good. So let's go ahead and throw on our 50. So now in this case, I have 50 set up. That is basically just here, the 50 mass with this hanger. But then also this hanger here has its own mass. So when we do our calculations, we have to take this mass into account as well. So when I post the <coughs> masses that I'm actually using, it's going to be the mass including the hanger and including the clip itself. So here I have 50 grams, but here this is going to give me an extra amount. So I'm going to just prop this guy over here for a second. I can't really do this with one hand. So again, I'm going to put this guy at 20. At the position of 20 centimeters. So there's my 20 centimeters. And then here I'm going to simply put my 50 grams. On the side. Good. So now on the other side, <clears throat> We want to do then is take our 100 and now simply slide this guy onto here. And again, we should expect it's going to be somewhere between say 60 and 70. So I'm going to start off with about here and then go ahead and throw on my 100 grams. Oops, wrong direction. Here we go. So we can see here then that's what, at about 67.5, that's a little too much. So I just have to simply now make some slight adjustments. So move that over. So now it's definitely heavier on this side. So I'm gonna move it a little bit back in each direction. This is definitely much easier with two hands. Okay, that's about good. So this one is, as you can see, not on the table. Uh, this one is also not on the table. I could probably do a better find adjustment from here. But if I just kind of randomly look, what I see is that this thing is at about 66.5 according to where the center of that mass hanger is. <clears throat> so good. So from here, then I would record that the, the, the position then would be at 66.5. 0.5 centimeters. Okay. Now, again, this would be your experimental result. You would have to actually do the theoretical result as well, so that way you can compare, so you could do your relative and absolute discrepancies as long as, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> uh, to basically report these guys. Okay. So meaning that you're gonna use your actual masses that you're hanging on here, do the theoretical results, find that theoretical position, and then compare that to the experimental, again, using your relative and, and absolute discrepancies. So good, so that's system one. So now let's go back to system four. So system four, we now want the pivot point at 30 centimeters. So let me take these guys off somewhat gently. So that I don't need anymore. Let's take this off. And that guy in there. Go ahead and take this off. Good. So now all I want to do is I want to take this pivot point and then move it to the actual location that I want the pivot point to be, which according to, again, the system chart here, uh, this is going to be at 30 centimeters. Sorry for moving the camera so quickly. I'm using my pinky on my recording hand here to give me some extra balance. So good, so now I've moved it to 30 centimeters. So again, now I just wanna put this guy onto the holder, so our rotation holder. So now what we wanna do is, according to system four here, we're gonna put 200 grams, so we're gonna put 200 grams plus the mass hanger itself. Um, we're gonna put that at a position of 10 gram, or 10 centimeters. But now what we're looking for is the mass which is going to cause this guy to reach static equilibrium at a position of 60 centimeters. But again, we can't forget the fact that since this thing is at a pivot point of 30 centimeters instead of at the center of mass, then this thing is feeling a torque right now due to the fact that we have a center of mass weight to our rod here. So when we hang the 200 grams over here, 
We have to take into account that not only am I hanging another one here at 60, but I also have that center of mass weight to it as well. So let's grab our masses. So here's my 200 plus the clip, and then this is going to be my unknown plus his clip. So put those there. So first thing first, again, let's put this one on here at 10 centimeters. And then here is my 200. So great, there's my 200. So now we're gonna put this one at 60. So now what I want to know is how much mass do I need to put on here to cause this thing to, again, reach static equilibrium. So if I simply put the 50 on here, we can see that's not enough. So now let's just start dumping some mass on here. So let's start off with a 50 and see what happens. So if I put 50 on here, oops, that was too much. So let's go ahead and pull that off. So it's definitely not going to be 100. Uh, let's try a 20. If I put the 20 on there, all right, so not too bad. It's a little bit heavy, so let me try one of these small ones. So let's put a two on there and see if we do a little bit better. And if I stop throwing the mass, that might be helpful. Not exactly the easiest thing to do with one hand. Okay, so putting a two on there is a little too heavy. So just for curiosity's sake, let's go ahead and try a one. See if that does anything. Okay, so adding the one, I would say, is definitely too heavy. So looks like the first amount that we put on there, or the second amount that we put on there, is probably the best because I don't have any half gram ones. So then all we need to do is measure this mass. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this whole thing off. Now again, when I put in the theoretical, or when I do the theoretical calculation, I have to include the total mass that I put on there, which is the mass in the hanger plus the mass of the clip. So here, when I measure this mass, I'm gonna go ahead and measure it with the clip because this is the number at which my theoretical calculation is gonna give me. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and throw this guy on here. So that's about 70 plus here. So that's going to be somewhere in the 80-ish range. So. 90. So that's at about 94.6. So in this case, the mass of mass two would be then 94.6. So you would then just keep doing this for all the different systems. Now here I did system one and then system four, but usually what I would have you do in lab is do system one and then system three. So since you already have it at the center of mass, those two have the pivot point directly at the center of mass. Make it a little bit easier instead of switching and then trying to go back and find that perfect position for the center of mass again. But again, from here, all you're going to do then is fill out all of these question marks using the actual mass at which you put on here. Uh, so again, I'll give you all the actual masses. So when I report the mass, I'm going to tell you the mass with the hanger and the clip so that way you know the exact masses. And then all of these masses that you're going to get here where you have the question marks will then be including the clip and the hanger itself. So from there, again, all you want to do is fill out all these question marks. You want to do this both experimentally and uh, theoretically using the experimental mass numbers, and then compare those using the relative and absolute discrepancies. And try not to throw masses as much as I did. So.